Welcome back tubes, One Dragon here. This video is the continuation of my earlier video on testing the new DLC weapons, vehicles, and new weapon attachments, specifically muzzles. I'll continue to look at the 10 muzzles introduced in patch 1.5 whilst discussing how to stack ricochet damage. This video will include both listed and undocumented changes. I will also briefly touch on other topics like crafting and nerf stats to explain why ricochet damage should be considered in patch 1.5. In patch 1.31 or earlier, weapons when crafted at a legendary level had varying stats. These three weapon cards are all legendary Moran Labays from patch 1.31. The first one has crit chance and crit damage, whereas the second one replaces crit chance with ricochet damage. If you compare the third one to the first copy, it has bonus ricochet damage, but a headshot multiplier of 1 as opposed to 2.63. In other words, players would often craft multiple copies or save scum until they got the desired stats, which was often the first example with no bonus ricochet damage. In patch 1.5, after crafting 20 copies of the Moran Le Bay, the stats have similar RNG when it's at an epic tier, but once it's upgraded to a legendary, they're no longer RNG. Additionally, after checking a lot of power weapons, ricochet damage is seemingly mandatory. Once you combine the weapon stats to the new muzzles, cyberware, and perks, you get a decent amount of damage modifiers. If we take a look at some common headshot damage multipliers in perks and cyberware, we can see that almost all of the headshot bonuses have been halved, and frozen precision also requires stacks of cold blood before hitting its potential. I've already discussed crit in a previous video, which has also been nerfed, but essentially for power weapons, ricochet damage is the only stat that received a buff rather than a nerf, and this is mainly a result of the new muzzles. One final note is that prior to patch 1.5, you could ricochet bullets with a silencer equipped. However, now they've removed that ability. Keep in mind that you can change to a muzzle mid-combat, so what you can do is start an encounter with a silenced weapon and then swap to damage muzzles if you get discovered. Since there are some new players to Cyberpunk, or a lot of people may have neglected this trait of power weapons, I'll go over a couple of basics. Firstly, you'll need to use a power weapon, which are probably the most common guns in the game, and have the Ballistic Co-Processor Hand Cyberware, which you get from Vic. I'd recommend getting the Legendary Co-Processor, which in patch 1.5 has an additional bonus 50% ricochet damage. Although the ricochet number dropped from 2 to 1, the muzzles added 1, so it evens out. This Ripper in Kabuki sells it at a reduced price compared to the previous patches and can be bought quite early in the game. By the way, big thank you for the new fast travel points next to the Ripper docks. To see the bullet trajectory, you have to aim down sights and you'll notice the arrows previewing where the shot will bounce and land. How to track the bullet trajectory has changed. Prior to patch 1.5, you used to have to equip a specific mod on the Kuroshi Optic cyberware to view bullet trajectory. However, now it is tied to a reworked trait in the engineering tree called Draw the Line. Furthermore, when you aim close to an enemy, the trajectory will lock onto the target, which allows you to hit enemies behind obstacles slightly more reliably. Also, it will lock onto other destructible objects like explosive canisters. When the trajectory locks onto a target, it seems to aim somewhat center mass, so although not impossible, you're likely not to get a headshot. However, it's not like you need to choose between stacking headshot and stacking ricochet, you can stack both. I'll go over what situations it's potentially good to aim for ricocheting as opposed to headshots after discussing stacking. Okay, so stacking ricochet damage. Firstly, there's the new weapon muzzles. Five unique ones for pistols and five separate ones for assault weapons, mainly assault rifles and SMGs. 
Although sniper rifles are assault weapons, I'm pretty sure you can't customize the muzzle, so keep that in mind. I've always commended CDPR for their amalgamation of cultures in this Blade Runner-like future, and this is represented once again in the super cool naming scheme for the new muzzles. The new muzzles are all named after nightmare fuel folklore from many different cultures. Given this is the case, I apologize in advance for butchering the pronunciation. All of these muzzles have the increased ricochet angle by 20 degrees and ricochet chance by 40%. I'll mainly be discussing the other modifiers that come with each of them. Firstly, we have the Aswang for assault weapons or the Liger for handguns, which simply increases damage by 17% with no downsides. This one is purely flat damage, meaning it's great if you're going in guns blazing or get caught during a stealth mission. I consider this modification a must-have if you're using power weapons. Next, there's the Yokai for assault and the Kuchub for handguns, which reduces the spread by 40% with once again no downsides. Next, there's the Strigoi and Ifri, which reduces recoil by 20% and increases ricochet damage by 100% at the cost of half crit chance. Upon testing, the half crit chance seemed to only apply to the weapon's stats and not the stats page, so if the weapon already has low crit chance, it's pretty worthwhile using. Next we have the Varkalak and Dibuk, which are hybrid, reducing both recoil and spread by 12% and increasing ricochet damage by 55%. Once again, at the cost of half of the weapon's crit chance. The final one for assault is the Zar. This muzzle reduces weapon spread by 20% and increases ricochet damage by 100%. This stat combo is unique to assault weapons. Lastly, we have the Babaroga or Babiaga, I think, which increases the ricochet damage by 175% and once again halves crit chance. Pistols sometimes have some of the highest crit chance on the weapon, so make sure that you calculate how much crit chance you have before you equip this one. However, if you use this muzzle, you can hit 375% ricochet damage. After you've chosen an appropriate muzzle for the weapon that you're using, ensure to grab the legendary ballistic co-processor and the additional 50% damage from investing 3 points into the perk Play the Angles in the tech tree. So to add it all up, you have the weapons base ricochet damage, the muzzles damage, cyberware, and play the angles, you can hit well over 200% ricochet damage total. Now keep in mind that this does appear on the weapon card and not on the stats page. So what situations is ricochet damage good? First of all, the maximum damage you can deal with power weapons, in theory, will be stacking crit with headshot damage and ricochet damage. However, I believe it's quite difficult to land headshots while also ricocheting, meaning you'll frequently have to choose between headshots or body ones. Obviously, Ricochet weapons are good in situations when enemies are behind walls and you don't want to use tech weapons. For example, they're quite good in corridors when enemies aren't rushing you. There's also the power iconic called the Buzzsaw, which both pierces walls and can ricochet, meaning you can both pierce and ricochet. The Buzzsaw is one of the best early game weapons as you can get it in Watson in Act 1. I highly recommend it as it's one of the few power weapons that can pierce through walls. Consider ricocheting when you can't headshot, for example mechs, and if you're doing a non-lethal playthrough using the target analysis mod, thus removing headshot bonuses. I found that power weapons are really good when there's lots of objects or walls for bullets to bounce off. Once again, remember you can swap between muzzles or silencers mid-combat and there's a couple of muzzles with no downsides and just pure buffs. The downsides are hitting civilians if there's a lot of people around, and since seeing the trajectory is not tied to cyberware anymore, it's tedious to reset perks to remove it. Overall, it's kind of weird to get used to, but if you're looking to change things up, it's always interesting. I've got a long list of videos I want to make for Cyberpunk, and I'll put some of those topics in the comments or description. Thanks Chims for watching, I'll see you next time.